So we're here at the Go Diving Show 2023 and this is a, a vista that very, very few people get to see. This is behind the main stage. The main stage is, is behind this. This is this massive wall of electronics is the, uh, is the huge big screen that the, the speakers will be using to show their videos and their photographs and all that sort of thing. And what you can't see just off camera is a couple of sofas and this is where all the speakers hang out. It's a little mini green room, which for me, who's both speaking but kind of hosting the main stage, it's very handy because it means my speakers can't be late. Because as long as I can get hold of them and drag them on the front, they'll be on time. So what's the main subject of your talk on the main stage of the Go Diving Show about this year? Yeah, so I'm, this year I'm doing a joint talk with uh, Chris Joe, my friend Chris Joe, who I do a lot of cave diving uh, exploration projects with. So we're doing a little bit of a, uh, the last sort of year of, 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 of cave diving in the UK, in Spain, in France. Uh, and it's a kind of insight into how we set these up and the variation of cave diving you can do from very, very simple, you know, scuba on air cave diving up to trimix rebreathers where you're doing overnight in dry chambers, you're camping in dry chambers that can all be accessed by underwater passages. Um, and uh, Chris's will be very impressive and mine will be very funny, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, now for some advice from our viewers, if you please. Uh, how do you consistently get the very best scuba diving profile pictures out there? Because I think every single picture that I've seen of you has just been immaculate. Please, please tell me there's like a thousand that didn't make the cut. <laughs> no, so how I get good photos for magazines or for talks or for social media, uh, the key thing is in the main, dive with people who are really good photographers. So Rich Stevenson, really good friend of mine, professional underwater cameraman and photographer, works for like big movies, for big documentaries. Always handy to have one of those uh, in the water with you. Or, um, or Dan Bolt, uh, you know, an award-winning underwater photographer on breath hold mostly, Dan Verhoeven. You know, he's the guy that films and photographs the World Free Diving Championship. So I, I, I'm very fortunate that I'm, I, I go for like fun dives with like world-class cameramen. Uh, and sometimes I've been known to do it myself, and that's literally with nothing more than a GoPro 9, often in caves. I mean, the two things there is lighting's really important. So I've got three big blue um, caving torches that are all wide beam. They're basically video lights rather than dive torches, but I dive with them. I get them, I spend a bit of time setting them up, setting the camera up, and then to be honest, it's, it's time and effort and trial and error. You just take lots and lots of photographs at that point. Um, and yes, on the selfie ones, it's usually a matter of taking a thousand with lots of different light kind of placements and then find the one that's the best and then kind of sticking it in Lightroom and try to adjust it so it looks presentable. Uh, and how is Archer doing in his underwater adventure? Is he about Sorry? old? How is your boy Archer uh, doing in his underwater adventures? Is he about old enough to start learning oh, to yeah. dive yet? So I've got, I've got two kids now, uh, one's eight and one's six and uh, both boys and they genuinely love the water. That's not, not something I forced them into, but it makes holidays easier. We take them somewhere like camping. If the campsite's got a swimming pool, that's a sorted litter. You can take them somewhere and just swim in the morning, have breakfast, go, go to the pool, have lunch, go to the pool, have dinner, go to the pool, go to bed. Same when we, we took them to the Red Sea, because I want them to snorkel, get in the water properly with some sea life. Uh, as much as the UK is great, it's still pretty cold and, and, and murky compared to uh, the Red Sea. And all we do is we just had breakfast, hit the beach, lay on the water all day, lunch, in the water all day, and then dinner in bed. So uh, they do love the water. Nice. Uh, and is there any one, well, what's the best upgrade to your own dive gear out there? Is there anything that you've just invested in, you strapped it on, and then after the dive, just gone, yes? Uh, so from upgrading my dive kit point of view, I was sent a couple of, um, Beautiful Nautec valves, like black, they're just these amazing valves, which they're just, they're so much easier to use than normal, uh, than normal valves. They just spin so smoothly, which, in fact, on a recent dive in, in, a, in a cave dive, I had one of my regs completely failed to shut my, my cylinder down and be able to just almost like spin the wheel really quickly is, is a genuine benefit. Um, so they, and they, another thing is they look beautiful, they're black, just, just, they're just, you know, they're like, if, if, if Apple made, uh, you know, cylinder valves, this would be them. The other thing is that I've started diving a lot more with a free diving suit, or well, actually a spear fishing suit, a bow shark spear, spear fishing suit. Um, just because it's only lined in the outside, so the inside's open cell, a little bit harder to get on, but um, once it's on, it's super comfortable and it's very, very flexible. So I find if I'm caving, dry caving to get to the dive site, or even just diving in general, it's, it's much more comfortable, much warmer for the thickness of, of neoprene uh, and much easier to move in. 
Okay, with the Aqualung being created in 1943, that's 80 years ago now, if you could go back in time 80 years and experience diving back then, or go forwards 80 years and go diving in the future with future technology, which would you prefer? I mean, they had some cool kit, like look cool. Like the old wetsuits with the, with this, you know, the uh, tape, that vintage look is, is very cool. It's a difficult one, because I mean, certainly if you can go back in time with the knowledge I've got now, I'd be like, I'd be a diving superstar, because I'd simply be like, right, let's, 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 let's try helium in this air and invent Trimix. You know, I'd take the, the rebreathers that were all year round, so rebreathers came out before scuba gear does, did, and I'd start using them. So I'm sure I could, I could make myself a bit of a legend back in the day if I could take back the knowledge. And as far as going, going forwards, I mean, you know, increases in technology in the diving has been pretty slow, I think, for decades, just because there wasn't that drive from military or commercial point of view. So things like rebreathers and trimix were pretty slow, actually, the progression. But it's speeding up now with, with things becoming a bit more efficient, because now for exploration, certainly in, in cave terms, in depth terms, we, are, we, we need the technology to push it. So now really to go further, you're needing two rebreathers. And recently we've seen a lot more uh, better made side mount rebreathers coming on the market. So you can dive with two rebreathers. One is a bailout, which you need. Otherwise, you just can't take 15 open circuit bottles into a cave, you know, as your, as your bailout, if you're going kilometers in there. Um, we're seeing scooters increase in, in range. You know, before you may get one or two kilometers out of a scooter. Well, that's not enough if you're going to try and do six kilometers in and six kilometers out of a cave. And things like the Genesis or the Seacraft and the Suex, which you can do like, you know, double figures in kilometers, uh, you can now reach places where that you couldn't, you know, a few years ago. I mean, obviously, I love the abyss, so hopefully one day in the future we'll be able to liquid breathe and we can go to like, you know, dive to like 600 meters. That'd be pretty cool because there's a lot of stuff down there I'd like to see. Um, so what would I do? In the short answer, I'll go forward. <laughs> and finally, how can people find you online and follow you and you and the amazing things uh, that you do? I, I, my website hasn't been updated in about four years. So I need to take care of that. So the best way to find me online is, is Instagram. I've got a presence on, on Facebook, but I don't really check it. I'm not on Twitter anymore. So Instagram is pretty much the only platform that if you want to see what's new and contact me, go there or I'm afraid to say you might not get an answer. <laughs>